now in welcoming Reverend Michael Record to the podium with another insightful message and encouragement this morning. I hope you have your pens and your paper because you may get homework immediately. Welcome, Reverend Michael. Thank you, Reverend Anne. Good morning, friends of the Temple of Light, Center for Spiritual Living. I greet those here in the physical sanctuary as well as my online audience. Reverend, jo Reverend Anne said, get out your pencils and papers or pens and papers. Yes, you might very well need it because today I'm going to be giving you uh, a summary of a class. It's a lovely, lovely Sunday morning here in Kingston, Jamaica. The day is beautiful, a gift from nature that we in Jamaica are given anew most mornings of the year. And the church is beautiful. Thanks to the care given to to the grounds and building by a handful of loving people, ministers and staff. Along with the beauty of this center, there is calm and serenity. Now numerous persons have remarked on that sense of peace they feel as soon as they enter the premises. Now, I want you to, the beauty and peace of the temple, of the premises, I want you to add to that the fact that the Temple of Light has been serving our community for more than 41 years. And when you do that addition, what do we get? Answer, a successful church. Well, success and peace are the topics of my talk this morning. Now, you all have, I know, some peace and success in your lives right now. But who wants more? Let's see the hands. More peace, more success. Lovely, lovely, good. So the talk, hopefully, will be useful to you. It is based on the Centers for Spiritual Living 10-week online course that was mentioned earlier in the announcements. To remind you, it is called 10 Secrets for Success and Inner Peace. And it starts on Tuesday coming. If you're interested, please register with the Temple of Light office and attend on Zoom at 7 p.m. The course calls for a lot of inner work, a lot of meditation, a lot of visioning, a lot of introspection. And this involves asking yourselves and one another deep spiritual questions. And not only asking, but listening for the answers that you get from spirit. There are 10 modules in the course, one a week. And these are the topics for each week, one. And I want you to think about those topics, how they would relate to you, how they would relate to your life as you hear the topics. The first one, be open to everything and attached to nothing. Number two, don't die with your music still in you. Was that from Angela, the musician? <laughs> no, other people have music. We all have music within us. The third topic, you can't give away what you don't have. Topic number four, embrace silence. Topic number five, G 
give up personal history. Think community, think the world, think humanity. Number six, you can't solve a problem with the same mindset that created it. Now, some of you have heard that statement before. We'll come to it later. Number seven, there are no justified resentments. I'd like to repeat that one, and there is a particular personal reason um, why that one struck a chord. There are no justified resentments. Number eight, treat yourself as if you are already where you want to be. Again, I know most, if not all of you, have heard that statement, perhaps phrased a little differently. Treat yourself as if you are already where you want to be. Think 2,000 years back. Number nine, treasure your divinity. And number 10 in the 10th week, avoid thoughts that weaken you. So those are the 10 topics for the 10 week course. I'll only discuss a couple in detail this morning. There just isn't enough time for all. Plus, you surely would not want me to spoil the pleasant surprises that are in, to in store for participants. But I'd like to hear the thoughts of those who are in the sanctuary on some of the topics. I wish I could also hear those from those online, but I'm not sure the technology is up to it. So in a minute, I'll ask different people in different groups around the sanctuary to respond to some of the topics without consulting one another. Someone in each group, just give me a comment on the topic. You could explain why you think the topic is true, or you could give an illustration of its truth. I'll start with the first topic. Be open to everything and attached to nothing. Here are my thoughts on it. My initial response to the injunction was that it's good advice. It's a way of saying we should be flexible, with a willing to change. On page 143 of the Science of Mind text by our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes, we have the information that since we have the gift of choice, we're always choosing. And I quote, we cannot live a choiceless life every day Every moment, every second, there is choice. If it were not so, we would not be individuals, says Dr. Holmes. And he continues, we are individuals, and the only way we can be individuals is to be spontaneous, unquote. Now, if we are spontaneously forever choosing, we are forever changing. So we had better be open to everything and attached to nothing. We'd be very unhappy trying to hold on to the things that keep on changing. We can't live in the past, right? I mean, literally, we can't live in the past. We can only live in the ever-changing now. And figuratively, we shouldn't live in the past. Now, in addition to a topic or a theme, they, each class is divided into segments. In addition to a topic or a theme, each class has these other segments. 
for discussion of set questions, that's one segment, for meditation, that's another. There's a segment for visioning about the week ahead, and there are introspection exercises. Here is one of the discussion questions in the first class. Think about it. You have a choice between magic wand A, which can bring you any physical thing that you desire by simply waving it. And you also have wand B, which gives you a lifelong sense of peace. Which would you pick? Any physical thing that you desire or a lifelong sense of peace. The assumption here is, and it's of course where we would be discussing it, the assumption is that getting the physical thing either will not give you lasting peace or it may not give you peace at all. At some stage, and maybe at all stages of your life, you'd feel stressed, anxious, maybe even unhappy. Let's face it, you could feel stressed, anxious, and unhappy while in possession of some physical thing that you desire. In fact, <laughs> most of us have felt stressed, anxious, and unhappy at some times over the past year, yes? perhaps even right now. And we now have lots of physical things that we desire. The wand would give you just one more. So having thought it out with me, maybe the lifelong feeling of peace is the better choice. What do you think? <laughs> Even if we don't have the house or the car or the significant other that we so desire, we might be willing to not have those but have the lifelong sense of peace. So what's the lesson learned? That things don't make us happy. Things don't bring peace. Another discussion question is, if you had infinite patience, how would you live differently? So, ask yourself, are you ever impatient with yourself or with others? That would be impossible in the new scenario if you have infinite peace. Infinite peace means that you'd become perhaps an optimist and have an optimistic view of life all the time because you're ever hopeful. The third question, where in your life do you feel most attached? And what can you do about detaching from that area? Now, when I reach that third question, I don't know about you, but that question makes me wonder if my conclusions in the first question about being attached to nothing, if my conclusions were right. I mean, suppose you're attached to a spouse or a child. Why would you want to detach? So there's a lot of sharing in the exercise segment for the classes, as you can see. In the first class, for example, students tell of something they believe which others won't believe. In that section of the class, that exercise section, they give their vision for the coming week. And they also do introspection on the stories, qu stories, quotes on quotes, that they tell themselves about three things. Your relationships, your health your bo and body, your work projects, 
and your personal time slash spiritual practice. What are the stories that you tell yourself about those things? What are the stories you tell yourself about your relationships, for example, with family, with friends, with acquaintances, with the casual persons that you met? What, what, really, what are the stories that you tell? And they are stories, in quotes, because they may change tomorrow. They are not permanent. It's things that we will discuss. Here's an easy question for you now. What happens in the universe when you set a firm intention? What happens in the universe when you set a firm intention? I want somebody to tell me. What happens in the universe, anybody, when you set your intention? The universe, I hear the answer from behind me, not in front, I wonder why. The universe adjusts itself to fulfill that intention. You affect the universe when you set yourself a firm intention. Thank you, Reverend Anne. So that's roughly what happens in class one. Before I start to explore the second module in the second week, which has the topic, Don't Die With Your Music Still In You, I would like to ask some of the questions to people in the different segments. So, I'm just looking for the for the, the questions. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, we, we spoke about the first one already, be open to everything attached to nothing. Um, I'm going to deal with that second one, don't die with your music still in you. But I'd like people over here, anybody over in this segment over here, to, to answer the question. You can't give away what you don't have. What, what are your thoughts on you can't give away what you don't have? Anybody over in this section? You can't give away what you don't have. Nobody wants to respond to that? Nobody has any thoughts about it? No? All right, let, let's go to this, this other segment. Um, give up personal history. And I'm looking in this sort of direction, including Jennifer and going way right back. Give up personal history. Who has any immediate thoughts on that one? Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Jennifer says, it means, at one level, don't hold on to anything that has happened in the past. Don't take what happened in the past personally. Good. Thank you. Um, this section here, this is a broad section. I'm looking through the columns. You can't solve a problem with the same mindset that created it. Anybody in this section here, you can't solve a problem with the same mindset that created it. The Go ahead, Courtney. The mindset that you have about the return that mindset is a secret. So you say, you can't solve a similar kind of problem with the That's right. Thank you. Thank, thanks, Courtney. Yes, agree. Got you, got you. Courtney points out that if you keep the same mindset that, cer that brought up certain problems, those same problems will keep on recurring. Very good. Thanks, Courtney. Uh, go ahead. 
And we hear from this original section that I was asking about, change your thinking, change your life. Don't hold on to, you can't uh, solve the problems with the same mindset that created them. So change them and you change your life. Go ahead, Doug. Oh, yes. I like the simplicity of that one. We could discuss that quite a bit. Doug Rain, for those who didn't hear, instead of th taking things personally, use we rather than I for the events that occur in your life and see the shift that takes place. Thanks, Doug. Really interesting. Good. So. Let me move on to the second um, week and the second module. We are here to, ex the, the statement, don't die with your music still in you, that was um, question number two, means that we are here to express ourselves, to express our individual music, if you wish. We are here to express as God expresses in the universe. Now, expression is natural. In fact, it is divine. Here is how it works. The universe is an expression of God. And the universe, of course, includes us. And because we do what God does, we are part of God, we have to express our own universe, which is our lives. So, we don't want to die without expressing the music, our lives, that is within us. We want to live to the fullest extent. To put it in the terms used by sociologist Abraham Maslow, we desire to self-actualize, to be the best we can be in all the ways that we can be. So we definitely don't want to die before expressing the talents we have. So there, these are excellent discussion questions, as, as, as you can see. And I want to go on to the uh, next, another module. Which do you consider to be more important? What you feel or what you know? What you feel or what you know? So there, there is an immediate response, but the, the class asks you to discuss different situations where either one is more important. So that one situation that certainly springs to my mind is someone, person A, feeling love for person B, so they're going with, with they have that feeling, but they know that person B is bad for him or her. In that case, what do you follow? Do you follow your feeling or do you follow what you know? Again, all these things are really quite interesting. Uh, there we go. <laughs> uh, and, and Sandra, a practitioner here, thinking deeply things. You could feel intuitively that the person is wrong for you. But then what about the knowing part of it, right? You're feeling that, what about the knowing part? What is it that you know? Again, we, we're not going to discuss them here, but, but you can see that these are interesting topics for discussion. Here's one more. If you are guaranteed a living doing what you love, what would you do? And that question, I'm going to touch on it. 
Though I know that most of you, if not all, have thought about it a million times. My question is, is what you are doing now what you want to do? And if not, why not? So that was my question. But the question that is asked by the Course, I also find very interesting. How would your preferred course of work serve other people. That leads to another important question. If you could, true, if your chosen work serves only yourself, could you really continue happily doing it for the rest of your life? Now I asked about your preferred work but maybe the thing that you would want to do for the rest of your life and be guaranteed a living is not work at all. But perhaps lying on a beach all day long, eating fish and bammy and drinking coconut water, that could be what you want to do or for the rest of your life and you would be guaranteed an income. But is that possible? Yes. Do you have any ideas on how you could be eating fish and bammy and still earning a living? Uh, yes, I have one. Here's one. The company producing the fish and bammy and coconut water pays you handsomely for advertising their products by lying on the beach, eating and drinking. Okay. All sorts of interesting possibilities. You could... <laughs> Oh, Sandy is, what you had for breakfast this morning? You are bubbling. Right. So, well, Sandy is a cookie and I should need to ask for it. It was something delicious, I know. Last question that I'm going to deal with here. It's, it's a bit more philosophical. How is failure an illusion? How is failure an illusion? And is failure really an illusion when hundreds of people, if not thousands, have committed suicide because of some failure or other? To them, it was real. So is the question, you have to ask the question if it's a genuine question, a valid question. How is failure an illusion? They are assuming that it is. Folks, um, that is just skimming the surface of the course. But it starts on Tuesday at 7 o'clock. If you're interested, the course again, 10, I'm looking for it, 10 Secrets for Success and inner peace. I got some interesting responses. I can see that you know the theory. You know in your heart. If, in addition to knowing the theory with your mind, you know in your heart if you are doing the practice. I won't ask you con to confess in public right now. So for now, let me just say namaste. Lots of food for thought. Mm, thank you, Reverend Michael. Ten secrets for success and inner peace. I'm here listening to some of the questions. Ah, what would I do if, right. I love ministry. That's the music that flows from me, so I'm not going to die with that. <laughs> and I live in a community that allows me to sing my music that comes from me. So I, I'm not attached to anything because everything that flows from my, from my song from within me allows me to express my divinity. I get time to embrace my silence. And I treasure that divinity. 
And what it means for me is that I can give from that, as well as it allows me to avoid thoughts that do not serve me. I think that's all <laughs> the 10 topics that... <laughs> It's, it's an interesting, really interesting class. You really should join. So friends, thank you, Reverend Michael, for giving us something to think about.